There it is. Hey, everybody. Okay, let me hit this uh, button over here. And now uh, we're ready to go. I got a couple hours to go because, look, I have the winning lottery ticket and they're going to have the drawing in two hours. And then, then I find out, oh, I was right. I won. Life is good. Uh, isn't that just like the biggest scam of them all? Look, they sold the tickets, right? They've got the money, but uh, they're going to pay you over 20 years. You know, here's my number so you can check. Yeah. And uh, if these numbers are drawn in two hours, you won't find me at this house. So don't bother trying to come and get it. There's Paula. Now, Paula had sent a package a couple of days ago, and it has arrived. She's been saying, is it there yet? Is it there yet? Is, is it there yet? You ever see the kids in the car? Look at this thing. It's huge. They kicked it in on one side, but that's, you know, that's what they do at the post office. It, it's their job. Now, it takes this to go out there at this time of night. There's pumas, bears, snakes, hippies. There's all kinds of stuff out there. But we're going to open this up and see what we got. And, uh... All we're going to do is perforate this plastic. There you go. Where is it? There's my line. Because I don't want to slice up what's in there. It's probably like baked goods or something. You see what she sent last time? Look at this. I keep That's a Hong Kong nickel. That's where these things come from. They don't come from Hong Kong. They come from Paula. She's got them all. She's got like a shed out back. It's just full of Hong Kong nickels. Oh, that's open. Do do do. We got some newspaper. What's this? Look at. There's a note. See that? Oh, you can see it here. It says Ken. Who writes that good? You can't read mine. All right, we got some laundry. Look, there's some baked goods in here. Okay, let me pull this down. There we go. Set it over here. We got a. We got some shirts. It's XL. It's perfect for my belly. I got uh, Young Mugs coffee roasted. That's Zeppo Young. He does coins and he makes coffee. It's uh, Body by Bacon. That's right. I got a six back stomach, but I got to use rope, you know, like some rope. And I put a pen right down the middle. There. Now that's a shirt. I'll be proud to drip bacon grease on that thing. There we go. Set that up to the side. What do we got for baked goods? It's brown brittle. I think it's a cookie. Here's a picture of Paula. Look, here's a picture of Paula. Right here. She makes cookies. This is her. Yeah. We got nutrition facts. Servings per container. 16. 16. Look, you sit there and eat them till they're gone, and then you shake the crumbs into your mouth. This is, you can't, don't believe these numbers. Chocolate chip. I think the, I think the kicking in of the post office kind of screwed them up some. Let's see, how do I open these? It's got one of those Ziploc tops, but they don't work. There. Works every time. I got Ziploc bags that can actually work. Can you smell this? Sm smell this. Yeah, we got cookies. You should all be more like Paula. Mm. I'll have to get to those later. Yep. Okay. We got, look, see? Reduce, reuse, recycle. We got some bubble wrap. Okay, we got a bunch of stuff. Oh, look at this. Oh, look. I want a care package from Paula. Well, she sent stuff in for the, uh, look at this. What are these crumbs everywhere here? Um, they're, they're good, but they're, they're crummy, the cookies. All right, we better read this before we start looking at stuff. Look, we got a big one. We got a really big one. We got this stuff. We got some stress, anti-stress. I had a lot of bubble wrap, but, well, I had a bad day. Now I have just plastic wrap. Will they let us ship bacon? They... You can get a shirt with bacon on it. I don't see why not. Just fry it up crispy like my grandmother did. It's just like black. 
she cooked it one of two ways. One was kind of wimpy, you know, throw it in the pan, get it warm. Here you go, eat and get get out to the field. Or, uh, I mean, black like a hole in the world. Be looking like this. That's, that's my grandmother's bacon right there. All right, let's open this. But uh, Paula sends items for the uh, the big show. So we get coins from all over the world here. Burnt is the only way to eat bacon. I like the wimpy bacon. Life is a lot like yoga. Relax, be flexible. And you get the skinny chick here. Okay, we got it. And try not to fart. That's important. Look, if you're going to do it, do it in an elevator with a bullet. I was working at a restaurant years ago, and uh, I was waiting tables. I go to this table, and there's like three old ladies, right? And they're just, we call them the good time girls. They come in all the time. They just have a great time. You load them up with the martinis, and they get to, you know, tear the place up. Uh, anyway, I approach a table, offered them drinks, and I couldn't help it. I had to had to let one out, man. So I just quietly let it both. Let it out. Just free, free the fart, liberate the fart. Uh, then I ran off to get their drinks. And I come back, they're all scowling at each other. Oh gosh, okay. Don't have too much fun while I'm gone. Where are you going, by the way? She's going to California. You know, swimming pools, movie stars, that sort of thing. Congrats to whoever wins the dance go. Oh, we got. I got to finish writing the uh, the answers for that. Or the questions, one or the other. Stay groovy. There. That's how you appropriately finish it. You say, stay groovy. There you go. Whatever your groove is, stick with it. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Let's see what we got. Okay, this is going to have to go. This is for Ken. I don't know what that is. Hopefully it's real bacon. And we got this stuff we're going to put in the big show. All right, we don't have to do a little surgery. Well, I like the bubble wrap. You can see through it so you don't have to slice up the coins. There you go. Now, see how she's got this packed? Let me show you this. When you pack stuff to ship, one key aspect of packing well is make a brick, right? Wrap it, wrap it, wrap it. Make it so it's one solid piece. It doesn't bounce around in the box, doesn't slide around in the envelope. It's solid. It's a ship a brick. Now, she's got this with a, with a wrap. And each of these are further wrap of plastic wrap is such a useful thing. And we go, we'll open this up. And don't cut yourself, I'll feel real bad. There you go. This stuff ain't moving. This is beautiful. It must be tough at Christmas at Paula's house. They'd be unwrapping for hours. See this? Plastic wrap? It works. It really is an effective darn thing. Little tape, little plastic wrap. I made all my furniture out of tape and plastic wrap. The couch is like, you know, just six foot long bubble wrap. There you go. So you're not going to screw up the coins. You're not going to screw up the package. You will mobilize it during during transit. And to get in, just a little light, just the lightest slice opens it right up. See? Cardboard. You can't beat cardboard. That's where my coffee table is. Okay, we got, we got some, she gets these little holders. These are wonderful. We got small and shiny. It's Queen Elizabeth II. She's got a crown on her head. So we know that is, let me put it over here. Anytime you see Queen Elizabeth and she's got a crown on, with my uh, scope, you know that it is a, uh, a sovereign, or not a sovereign territory. It's a British possession, like Singapore or Hong Kong or Macau, one of them. There you go, she got the crown. Like uh, Canada, she got the crown. Bermuda, she got the crown. England, she don't have the crown. And that's a beautiful shape. Let's flip that over and take a look what we got. Well, while I'm here, I'll, you know, look for doubling and cracks. Okay, it's a Hong Kong, it's a Hong Kong nickel. All right. There it is, five cents Hong Kong. That's a shiny one too. I might have to switch that out. What's the year on that? 1971. I just like saying Hong Kong nickel. Okay, there we go. We're going to have a whole show just dedicated to Hong Kong nickels. Oh, you can't see that. Oh, I told you, Hong Kong don't have them. Paula has them. Well, look at the luster on that. 1971 Hong Kong nickel. I don't even know what these are made out of. Is it brass? Copper? 
These are stuck together. There we go. This one's a, oh, look, here's King George. That's good King George. And he's got a crown on. The sixth, King George the sixth. Here he is. Let's see if I can angle that. We get a better look at him. Okay. I'll bet you a Hong Kong nickel that that's a Hong Kong nickel. Just an older one. Flip. What do I win? I win a Hong Kong nickel. Well, here it is. Here's a 1950. You know, you get into these foreign coins, and they are sometimes go back much farther than the than U.S. Because we started our mint in uh, 1793, right? Uh, I mean, it was the 1730s and 40s before the economy was big enough uh, to support uh, making coins every year. Uh, dimes, for example, there's a whole lot of years they didn't make dimes. They didn't need them. What do you need dimes for? Ain't nobody got a, can afford them. Okay, we got a Cinco Centavos, a glorious one. There we are. Absolutely full cartwheel luster on this one. And that's worth uh, Cinco Centavos. Where's that from? Estados Unidos Mexicanos. That's the United States of Mexico. We can't see a thing. There we go. Look at the shape on this one. That's absolutely brilliant. All right, they got the same issues there that we have. See the little finning on the side? Yep, you got a cactus, you got an eagle, you got a snake. Come on, we don't have that kind of stuff. We got like, what do we got? A bird and stuff. We got a building. Estados Unidos Mexicanos. Let's look at the front. There she is. I don't know who this woman is. But I'm sure she's popular. She's like uh, the mother. That's Madre, the mother, mother of Mexico. 1969. And the M with a little dot is Mexico City, as I understand. Phoenix says, hey, y'all. Ken PV, the wheat's arrived at my shipping address. Outstanding. Uh, I had uh, three packages in the floorboard of my truck. Um, they kind of got shipped a little late. But I found them and sent them out. Did you see what Paula sent? Look at this. Where'd it go? We got a 1950 Hong Kong nickel. Did you see that? Yeah, I'm gonna start collecting these. There, I got a 1950. And this shiner, that's a 1971. Is that right? There it is. And we still don't know what uh, what the what the symbols mean, uh, but uh, I can guarantee you, there's like an 18 year old running around a beach with that tattooed on her back. I don't know what it means. They go over to Hong Kong to hit the beach. Nobody points at them and laughs. I get so paranoid when people point at me and laugh. There's Beth. Beth, we're opening up a package that came from Paula. She sent some cookies. She sent a bacon t-shirt. She sent a bunch of coins. There we go. One slice right across the cardboard. I know I won't screw nothing up. Peels right open. This is how I open lemons. Oh, that reminds me. I still got to get a lemon. No, I have not been to the store in a month. Lemon. Okay, we got a piece of, see, look, a piece of cardboard. She took a pair of scissors and cut a piece of cardboard that fits so you can contain your coins, wrap it with plastic, it's immobile, and then use that uh, bubble wrap. We got a cardboard, we got a paper, we got this, huh? That's nice. Stop my nickel. Okay, we got four coins in here. We got some brilliant... That'll probably go for the dance go, I bet you. See, another card, so the coins don't rub together. Four shiners. Okay, we'll look at those. See, another card. More coins. Those are interesting. We'll have a look at those. Okay, we got some, uh, we got some Lincolns that we'll add to the dance go giveaway. And now we got to look at them, see what we got. Home screen. There it is. Okay. What have we got? We got an inside a plastic holder. So I got a 1963D. Clean, crisp, clear. Every bit of love right there. We got a 1978. Now those 70s, if you can get them with no contact marks and a good sharp strike, you're doing good. Seriously, they're hard to get in high grades. A 1961D, we're going to have to go in close and look at those mint marks. And this one is 1974. What do you notice? 
particular about that 1974, that is a small date. 1974 has large and small date on all three mints, P, D, and S. Only the best for my coin family. You're darn right. See, I keep the best for myself, and then it's nothing but the second best for all you folks. Here you go. 1974. The big giveaway is the 9 and the 7. On a large date, they're just, you know, fat. That's They're wider. They're thicker. Uh, and that's a design variety for that year. You have the 1960 P and D. They come in small date. The 1970 S only, not the P or the D, just the S, has a large and small date variety. And you all know about the 82 P and D, but not the S. 1961. I want to get in closer on that mint mark. Can we do that? Well, we'll put it in the package. And whoever gets a pack, whoever wins the dance is going to have a few nicies. That looks pretty good to me. 1978. Oh, the 63D. What am I looking for? I want to look inside the date. I want to look inside the th That's not it. Inside the three for an extra three. I keep looking for them. I ain't found them yet. Okay, this one looks okay. And a 78. There he is. Yeah, these are shiners. We'll set those right here. Here we have... Oh, set those aside. We'll look at those in a minute. Paula, there's 15 people watching right now. Okay. We'll just open up some mail that Paula sent in for the big show. 1962D. That's a real looker. How do you look? And you get over and you look at the tops of the letters in Liberty. And you look at the bottom of the L. I'm, the early 60s, the double dies are just, just little things. What's this one? It's a 1964. We'll have to flip him over. Every date, it seems. Once you get past about 1940, the production started to increase as far as the numbers. So you needed a whole lot more dies. That's die deterioration doubling is what you see here. And the more dies you need, well, the more double dies were produced. Not because they wanted to, just because they're out like the night before. 62, 63D. Oh, 62D. Do we see him yet? So starting in the mid-40s, you had a whole lot more of them. Some of them are pretty subtle. And some of them are, you know, you can't miss it. What you got here? That's a 64. And that's a normal looking piece. Great shape. That'll make a fine addition to a dance go. This is the 63D. FG. Here's the little man. There he is. He looks handsome and proud. And then the 62s. Don't you hate when I put him up there sideways? What's this black line? I think it's one of mine. It's gone. Everything's under control as of right now. Yeah, okay, those look wonderful. Put those there. Then we have these four, which are interesting because that one's got a lot of color to it. Let me zoom out and have a look. Cat hair? Oh, I have another cat, it turns out. Yeah, I've been feeding, you know, the big dumb orange cat. He stays outside. He's sick. He goes from the t roof of the truck over to the food dish. Uh, then he wanders off into the bushes. Then he goes back to the roof of the truck. That is his world. Food, sleep, doo-doo. He's got everything in a 10-foot radius. And there's a 1970S. And you can see the, the 7 is low. And low is large. But we want to look at those 70s real close. Okay, right around the 7, right around the 0. Check for a repunched mint mark. Come up here and look and trust for, for doubling. But you see the color here? That's what that's what has my attention. Got a lot of toning on this. Is that a woody? Well, the woody sets tended to dry up right in 1962 because in 63, the Lincoln sets were made with 95% uh, 90 copper, 5% zinc. It used to be 5% tin and zinc. So instead of 2% tin, they replace that entirely with uh, with zinc. But you see the, you see the stripes? Should decide if, is that a woody or is it something else? 
Malvado says, hey, what's up? We're looking at stuff. We got another 1970. I can't see it. I got a little wrinkle in the way here. Oh, I can take this open. So the uh, traditional woodies that you had before 1963 kind of dried up because the way they changed the recipe. You know, you, you take the flour out of the cookie and it's a different kind of cookie. Now, not, that seven is low. You draw a line from the top of the nine to the top of the zero and the seven is low. That's a large date. Here's another one, which is good because we have two dance girls we gotta we gotta work with. Same here, and the inside of the nine, that upper loop is gonna point almost straight over to the right. But there's the toning going on with that. And that does not look like a uh, a Woody in the traditional sense. And another one. There we go. And I see the position of the mint mark changes. You're going to see that a lot, too, because they were struck in by hand. But this one has my attention here. We're going to have to go, we're going to have to go closer. Do you really think I would send a small date? You sent cookies. Why not? I'm looking at that, oh, real hard. What's inside? That looks pretty normal. You might. I got one around here somewhere. Uh, don't ask me where. My system of organization has been ruined. Uh, I moved up so much stuff in the past year. It comes in, it goes out. Uh, I stopped actually putting them in a proper place because there's just no time. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, we got some 70s, 60s. A bunch of good stuff. Now we'll get the other half of the brick here. Home. Now, if you want to send coins in for the big show, uh, it really adds a lot to the uh, to the to the package. And uh, is everybody here familiar with the big show, Melvado? I, I don't see you often. Uh, every Sunday at uh, nine thirty, we have the big show. Nine thirty at night, Eastern time. Now that's a uh, community supported giveaway. It's everybody in the in the community sends in coins. They send in cash, and we take the cash. And we convert that into the retail value of coins and we put the package together. And they send in coins and we, you know, add those in sometimes over several weeks because they send a lot of them sometimes. And we give it all away to one winner. Uh, Beth has won a couple of times, for example. Cheryl, it, Cheryl is due to win soon. Uh, Paula won, matter of fact. That's really neat because the people who win always wish that everybody else really contributed more. Oh, look at this. Oh, Jesus. Can we see this? There's a freaking spider here. Let me get him out of the package. I've seen these in pictures. Okay, here's Australia. Well, I think it's New Zealand. Let's see if we can get that to work. Elizabeth II. See the crown? British possession. That's a dollar. Real nice one. Real, real nice one. That's Australia. Uh, they got some weird stuff going on in Australia. They got, the, you know, a, a dingo, right? They got the Dillager babies. But the Australian kids will eat the dingoes. Uh, they got a, I mean, a scorpion, a black uh, black devil scorpion. They'll knock a man dead in two steps, right? They got a freaking, uh, they got a freaking viper. Uh, they'll kill you in five minutes. I hear the beaver down in Main Street in Melbourne is pretty tough too, but this thing you got the uh, you got this giant spider on the back of the coin. These are magnificent beasts. That's a funnel. What is it? Australian funnel web spider. And that is a silver dollar. Okay, we're gonna give this away. This will be a uh, one of the anchors. This is a wonderful design. Seriously, look at that. Uh, how many of these coins have been ruined? Because people look and just react with a boot. I like it very much. You can win this. Well, these, this is magnificent. I think any blemishes you see are on the holder. Because that looks like a beautifully uncirculated piece. There's not a mark on that coin. 
You see the camera. I wonder if I can open that and get a better look. No, that baby's hermetically sealed. That's a cool thing. So we'll have to make that the picture. I'll make a GIF. People be people be hitting their computer screens and phones with, with boots. Yeah, Australian phone funnel web spider. And that's a one ounce silver dollar. See, the United States, we got the eagle, right? Canada, they got the maple leaf, right? Australia, they got the spider. <laughs> okay, that's a heck of a thing right there. You don't see those around here too much. Okay, we'll open this one up. That'll be a nice anchor coin for a package. And Koi Lover's here. She sent some, uh, Koi has sent some items to the the uh, dance go that's how it works oh oh she showed a picture of this um, a numismatic token the state uh, local groups right in this case the California State Numismatic Association uh, you know they do their thing they collect their dues and they make these well metals it's it's a numismatic guild metal if I can get that to focus What's the bottom say? Oh, we'll have a look over here. Of course, California, they have an advantage over the rest of us. They get a mint. You know, we don't have such a thing as like the Miami mint or the Jacksonville mint or the Orlando mint. There we go. Organized in February 2247 and incorporated in June 61. Here you go. It's got a bug on it. Okay, so California. What is that? Oh, it's a flagpole. Never mind. It's not a, this. This is a bug. Can you see the bug? Look at that. It's good. In any direction, that's terror. I will have bad dreams for weeks because of this. There you go. California whipped up. Got a bear on it. And the other side is the Granite Lady. And there's a San Francisco Mint. CSNA, California State Numismatic Association, 50th. Semi-annual convention, home of the S Mint Mark. There she is. Looks like that. And host club, Pacific Coast Numismatic Society, 1972. So there, you can date the coin to being produced in 1972. And people collect these. And it's exonumia. It's kind of like coins. It's, you know, exonumia stuff. Look at all the stuff. I got packaging for weeks here. Hey, Juan, are you selling any Indian scents? Uh, I have a couple, but right now I'm showing off a, a package that was open. Uh, I need to bring back the Friday night uh, sales show. Uh, I was doing so many darn shows. Do a Wednesday show, have a day off. Do a Friday show, turn around, immediately do a, a Saturday show. And turn around, immediately do a Sunday show. And it was just too darn much. Time for a break. But, uh, yeah, stuff building up around here again, so we're going to have to do a, a sales show. Let's see if we can get into this. But i got some. Oh, there's a 1908 S around here somewhere. Uh, there's a 1909, pretty nice. There's a, oh, I think some better dates in the 1800s, better grades. Oh, we got more stuff. What do we got? We got 90s. Some BUs for the uh, for the big dance go. We've got more 90s, 95, 95, 95. I think she got a whole roll of 95s and throw them in. Then we got 88s. Okay, when I see 88, and these are 88s. The first thing I do is flip those over. Stop what you're doing and flip them babies over. Here we go. Let's see if we can see what we can see. 1988. Now you got a major variety here. You said you've heard of the whams. Uh, 98, 99, and 2000. You've got a wide AM design on the reverse. Well, it originally it was supposed to be used on the 1989s, but that design was used early in 1988. It's the same design, RDB06. But in 1988, the normal design there already had a wide AM. So you get a lot of confusion. I think I can I can see through this. 
you get a lot of confusion. But what you got to look at is the FG, right? Because if it's the same des reverse design as is used on the wide AM 98, 99, to 2000, it's actually the proof design reverse from uh, 93 onward or 92 onward or something like that. There you go. Then you check the FG, and what you're looking for is little tails. You're looking for a horizontal bar on the inside of the G and a little tail, just a little nub straight down. I can't see anything here. Okay, tape's got to go. Let's see if we do some surgery and get that tape out of the way. I could always take the coin up, coin out and get my fingers all over it. I think he's underestimating. Never underestimate Paula. Yeah, I think we can see it here. And that looks to be, I can't tell. How do I get into this? Is that a spider? Jesus. Okay, she wraps it. She wraps her items securely, I can tell you that. Okay, we'll just kind of nudge it out some so we can see. That's a normal G. And the next one, that one's normal. And the next one, we will never know. Hmm. Okay, come on out. I want like that one up there. Yeah, we'll get my fingers all over these. But these are wonderful. These are 88s. You know, if you got to put together a nice set, you got to have all years. Okay, let's see if we can see. Uh, I need a toothpick. I can move that around. These are splendid examples. And that's a normal. That's normal. But you're looking for a little tail on the inside and a little vertical serif as well. But I stop what I'm doing and take a look. Because these, you find them on the 88s and 88Ds, yeah, that's a, you know, good money. I figure, I think the 88s are the more common, and they're going to be 20 bucks. The 88Ds, you're looking for, you know, several $20 bills. There we go. We keep those nice and set them here. Let's look at the others here. 95. Okay, 95 is another good one. If you only pick out a few dates when you go through rolls, you know, you can pick out the wheats, but pick out some of these dates. 95 has a wonderful double die. The 88Ds, 99, uh, 98, and 2000. Check for whams. This looks pretty good here. Great color on these. And you'll get a whole lot more out of those boxes than just, just the wheats. Bien amigo. Aquí, tranquilo y frío el cementerio. That means, bien, good, good friends, I'm going to water down the cemetery. I think that's what that means. My, my Spanish is a little rusty. Okay, what are these? 1999. There it is. Back in the 70s, it was a great show. They should have kept it on for more than two years. It was Space 1999. Yep, that's where the moon gets blown out of orbit because all the nuclear waste that was being stored there exploded. And then you had the adventures of all the people on Moonbase Alpha. It was really just, you know, a second rate B film. Uh, but geez, when you're when you're seven years old, it was the best stuff out there. We better check these for whams. I'm sure we won't find any. That's a close AM. See the closeness of the A and M? They're in great shape. These will make a fine addition to the dance go. But if we do find a close AM, or a wide AM, we'll put that in. That's no problem at all. I only keep uh, Hong Kong nickels that come in. The rest go into the uh, the big uh, the big show package. So if you want to send coins to the big show, I got my email address right up here. Ooh, we got some 72s. And uh, send me an email. Say, hey, I want to send some stuff in for the big show. And somebody will get it. That's a 72S. Look at that. Wonderful shape. You know, these are one of the last S mitts uh, on the Lincoln sensor were made for uh, for circulation. Now let's have a look up here. That looks wonderful. 
So 75, there are no more estimates produced for circulation. Okay, I have a suspicion on, on this one. I want to come up here and take a look. I don't quite see it. I'm going to open this. Because uh, Mark Rossman, are you here? Mark had sent a picture of a 72 that he had found. And i got to get back to him and explain what it is, what's going on. Because his question, is this a double die? Well, in 1972, you have what's called a master die doubling. Where the master die was doubled by the master hub. See, the hub, the masters produce the workers. Uh, the master hub produced the master die. The master die produces the working hub. The working hub produces the working die. And the working die makes all the pennies. Well, the hub can be doubled. The master die can be doubled. Anything can be doubled any step of the way. So in the master doubling on 1972, and you're going to see this on about half of them. You see that little bit right in the upper two? All right, that's that's actually doubling, and this is uh this is typical uh, master die doubling, and I look up here, uh, you'll see it on the we, and especially in the N, uh, but sometimes you know over time they wear down and disappear, so you don't quite see it, and you see it in the B, but this is a uh, master die doubling. No no premium because half of them are like that. But these are going to be going into uh, the dance goes. 1972S. Again, see a little bit in the upper loop of the two. And I'm going to come up here. Shows up well on the N. Where it looks like an N on top of an N. Now I'll put these two on the card at the same time. Save an extra step. Let's see. Good color on this one. 72S. That's curious. MD? I'd have to look at that with a scope. Paula, have you checked these? Yeah, but they're great. They're in great shape. Okay, let's keep going. I gotta put these away now. Bill's back. Good to see you, Bill. We're going through a package that Paula sent in for the big show. Because she sends. Huge stuff, good stuff, really good. Did you see what she sent this time? Look at this thing. Look, you got to see this. Look at that. She sent a freaking spider, man. I get these in the house. You know, I burn down sections of it. I'm down to two rooms. That's a, an Australian funnel web spider. That's a one ounce silver. Good for a dollar. You know, in Australia, which is like, I don't know, 50 cents in them. How much is that in American? <clears throat> it's still an ounce of silver, and the date is 2016. I can't see that. Scope. Jesus. Australia, 2015. Funnel web spider. Yeah, that's brilliant. Is that a proof? No, that's a brilliant uncirculated, but it's a nice shiny one. Look at that. Here's this. Here's giant freaking fangs. Here's these things in the back. You know, he stings you with those and you die. Look at the look at the look at the guts on this thing. You stop on with that with your foot. I mean, you get it's gonna you just track it all over the house. Ten dollars. Well, it's an ounce of silver, so I suspect it'd probably go in the. Uh, where'd it go? Here you go. One ounce. Point nine nine nine. Uh, that's probably a twenty-five dollar coin. Wonderful shape. We can track that all over the house. Here she is. Here's her nose. Here's her wrinkles. Here's her grandmother's. She gets that from my grandmother. It's not her fault. Seriously. Okay, we get some more stuff here. It's the package that never ends. Oh, look what Paula has sent. Look how shiny those are. Look at some brilliant uncirculated wheats. Oh, hell yeah. And some more brilliant memorials. What's the date here? 1985. 85 was a quiet year, but you do have some dye varieties. Let's see. We'll zoom up here. And uh, we'll give the people that 
get the coins a little bit of work to do. We won't search these for dye varieties. We'll just show up how nice they are. There you go. These have to be out of a, an uncirculated roll. Have to be. They're in great shape. Late 70s to the mid 80s, getting top grade Lincolns uh, gets tough. A lot of times you'll see MS 66, 67 are the, high, are the top populations. Here's some weeds. What do we got for dates here? It's a 58D twice, three, four times. We'll set that rate right up. You know, a lot of people have never seen a BU wheat set. There we go. Here's a here's a couple of what well, you can you know typical brown, B, brown circulated wheats is what you see, and here's a 53D, perfectly normal, uh, entirely respectable. You can get these out of your pocket change and build a nice little set, but you're not going to get these very often. Is that a, what is that? That's a piece of cardboard. Uh, getting these in, in circulation, that's the trick. You got original cartwheel luster on these. Anything I should see? I gotta check for, I gotta look for buys. I have to. It's a compulsion. I can't stop myself. Somebody help me! I'll set those over here. Yeah. I think it's solid. Okay, I'm gonna need scissors. There we go. Try not to cut yourself with scissors. Don't run with scissors. I did that once. It was years of therapy getting over it. Oh, look. It's a... The Documents of Freedom. There you go. We got a solid, solid case here. The Documents of Freedom. I'm going to guess this is... The Franklin Mint item. Let's have a look. I haven't seen these. It's a... Uh, oh, they're big. What do we got here? Here's a Constitutional Convention. And a Declaration of Independence. And it's a, med a medallic tribute to American Authors of Freedoms. International Numismatic Agency, New York City. Okay, we got some great exonumia. This is the kind of thing you could show off. Set it on your desk. Your friends come over, you say, look what I got, bitches. These are gorgeous. Let me see if I can get them out of the uh, holder here without opening them like I just did. Okay, if I lift from here. The package contains what looks to be holders for individuals. To, to store the coins individually. Let's see if I can get them out. I'm pressing the bottom. This is difficult. Because I have no grace. And coin dragons here. Coin dragon. We got, we got a package from Paula and we're, we're ripping it apart. Ah, there we go. Nope. There. So you got a solid acrylic octagonal holder. Let's see if we can get that to focus. There you go. Great detail. There's Ben Franklin, unmistakable, right there at the front. You got Huntington. This would be Jefferson behind uh, Franklin. I bet you this is going to be Sam Adams. Enjoy your players. Who's Huntington? He was the president of the Constitutional Congress, right? That makes him really the first president of the United States, except we weren't United States. We were colonies still. It probably says we the people. We're gonna have to get over here to see this. And I'm not gonna take that off easily. We'll look through the plastic. There you go. We the people of the United States of America. See, before the Civil War, we were R. We are the United States. You know, the United States are. United States are a group of states, but after the Civil War, we were a, we were a nation. It was the United States is. That's what the Civil War did to us. It made us an is. 
Okay, let's see if we can get the other one out. Oh, that one was so much easier. No spiders. Okay, we got Huntington. Oh, we can't see it. Now we'll look right here. There you go. That'd be uh, Samuel Huntington. This would be Ben Franklin, and that's got to be Jeff. That's got to be uh, TJ. Yep, and they wrote with feathers. Yeah, put that in your pocket. And the back is in Congress. July 4, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the United States. We. Okay, can you read this? When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for a free people to declare their rights and sovereignties before the world. Read that thing. It's a good document. It was made, the Declaration of Independence was written to be read out loud. Remember, it's 1776. About 10% of the people could read, right? So if you're going to declare, you know, independence, you got to do it in a way that one person reads it to, you know, 100. It was made to be presented as a speech. So if you read the Declaration of Independence, read it out loud. Or have somebody read it to you. It's got, there's a lot more power in, in there. That's a neat thing. So we'll have those. I, I could not offer a value on those. Um, but we can, uh, you know, you can look it up on your own. Whoever should happen to win this. It's the International Numismatic Agency. And I suspect those are um, brass or, well, copper nickel with a lot of copper. Kind of a neat thing. This is what Paula does. She supports the heck out of the show. So when she gets a show, right, you have to watch that. The venom from that spider is twice as strong as cyanide. Look at this thing. I tell you, they got killer animals over there. They got a kangaroo, right, with a stinger on them. It's like three feet long. They don't tell you this because, you know, tourism, they, they need tourists. They don't tell you about the stinging kangaroos, right, the venomous wombats. It would shut down tourism. They got birds that try to kill people. They got dingoes that'll come after your kids. That's an Australian funnel web spider right there, mate. Where is it? Right here. That's an Australian funnel web spider, that mite. And you, you do this and it goes to sleep. Paula, this one says to can. Am I supposed to open it? Am I supposed to open that? Is Paula still here? She left yet. Open the little box. There it is. That's the, uh, this one's a little off. I think we can move that. Ooh, I, I put it in crooked. We're just going to have to live with it. Okay, this one says, for Ken. Because I don't win nothing on these shows, unless I go to Mantix, and then I win, you know, like everything. All right, how do I open this? I'm going to catch it here. Okay, I'm going to catch it here. I'm, I'm exposed this much of the, uh, the, the razor. Don't do this at home, because if you cut your hand and bleed out, I'll not be liable. They should put that on a coin. The spider? They did. Or the, the stinging kangaroo coin. Oh, look, it's... Oh, I've always wanted this. It's bacon bomb. Rub that in your balls. Yep. It's bacon flavored lip balm. I'm gonna put this on right now. I can't get in. It's a blister pack. Is this like a collector's piece? I'm supposed to keep it in the original container. There, we'll just we'll keep the container then. Nope, we ain't gonna send this out. I think it's actually bacon grease. There you go. Look, you tube it up. Mmm. It's bacon. It's got to be bacon grease they put in there. Somebody is thinking, this is how geniuses work. I got this thing with bacon. Put it on for breakfast. You just jump out of the shower, you know. You get an itch, whatever you like. 
Okay, we got this. I enjoy something. Okay. Let's see if we can get this open. I'm becoming a master at opening packages. It's a it's an election pen. It says look at the periodic table. B A barium C O that's not anything. Cobalt, that's it. And nitrogen. I enjoy bacon periodically. <laughs> and the jet right here. I just stare at that. And we're gonna put this up here. Yeah. That'll be a prop for a while. What have I done? I'm going to tape that up. we got some socks. Look, here's TJ. Huh? Monticello calendar. Oh, this is awesome. Look at that. You get the back of a nickel on January. 1968. I was like 11 months old. My mother says I'm 583 months old. When does that stop? Ever? You get the back of nickel in February, up close. You know, people be checking around the door for doubling. You got March. Now, this, this is actually a good calendar, like every 17 years. It'll be back to normal. 1968. Close up of the doors. Check out the, check out the deer head. I'm going to get me some deer heads and be just like TJ. Here's inside. His bed was interesting because there was a divider in the side of the room. Uh, and the headboard and footboard were, were walls. And he had closets in behind him. Uh, his writing desk, if you check it out, he's got a, he's got a duplicator. Uh, and he could write. He'd pick up the pen, right? And it was connected to another pen. And he'd pick it up and move. And the gears or the, you know, the sticks would move the other pen and dip and he'd pick it up and as he'd write the other pen would write right of course it'd, be, it'd write backwards so he had the paper upside down and he could duplicate what he was writing and he'd dip both pens would dip and go back to where he was and write and he, he that's how he made carbon copies he'd keep one for himself and send the other one off so he had a record and uh, you'll see that on his desk. See the two feathers? That's why there's two feathers. Here we got uh, got a library. huh? We've got a fish tank. Is that a fish tank? What is that? It is. It is a fish tank. It's got, uh, it's got, I don't know what's in there. That might be his duplicating device inside this. Yeah, he thunk stuff up. Keep the thing. I love this. Oh, that's exquisite. I think I might want to build one of those. Yeah, I've built stuff before, you know. I'm, I can, I'm pretty handy with what Hoogie's good. I do pretty, I can hold my own. We got the dining room table, some kind of piano, got a bust of who? Who would he have a bust of? That's got to be Plato or something. I can't see there's a fiddle on there. I'm so old. 1968? I was almost a year. In August of 68, I was like a year and a half. Now, we had similar chairs to these growing up. Kind of a shield shape in the background. They were mahogany. Uh, they were in the dining room, but they had to go when we put this wood stove, uh, yeah, wood stove in there. Yeah, like the old clock. Which it really, uh, what I see that's really interesting in these old homes, if you ever go tour these old mansions, they've got stuff, but nowhere near the sorts and volumes of stuff that we have, All right? I mean, you got a table, and it's wonderful, exquisitely made, craftsmanship, top to bottom. And the chairs, same thing, elegant, comfortable. And you have some busts, some great artwork, some pieces. Uh, but you don't, it, none of it's plastic. These are probably stone. Right, this is leaded glass. You got this thing is teak or some darn thing, uh, but there's one thing on the table, and they probably added that afterwards. The silverware, you know, they had eight pieces, and that was that was it in the house. 
but they had things, but not abundance. This is probably the entire kitchen. This is their entire kitchen cookware set. Onions, tomatoes, what's that, garlic? Okay. Put in a, you get a shotgun. A shotgun with gunpowder is not the best thing to put above the fireplace. I'm just saying. Especially if you're standing over here. Then you got fall. Yeah. Now Monticello is in Charlottesville, Charlottesville, Virginia. And uh, it's a great spot. He's got, I don't know how many acres. There it is, the aerial view. And, uh, and Jefferson, he did a lot of agriculture. He was a planter for the most part. You'll see gardens over here. Um, out in the back, just behind the house, are all the quarters for, uh, uh, for his staff, who call it that, his slaves. And um, he grew everything. I mean, wheat, barley, uh, rye, uh, vegetables, corn, lots of that. And then some years he did okay, and some years, you know, bust. Uh, but he had a nail business. Jefferson made a lot of money just making nails. He didn't make the nails, his slaves made the nails. But you got to realize, you know, it's... Uh, 1780, 1760, 1800, uh, nails were hard to come by. They made cut nails. And they made them for years and years and years. And that's how he built his fortune that gave him the ability to invest in, you know, all the land, building Monticello, which took like, you know, 60 years all by itself. Um, that's how we got the money to invest in stuff, you know, in Paris to bring over that he could lose money on there. Yeah, we're talking about TJ. Here he is. Get your get a collection of TJ. So I've got a book over here with uh, what is it? The autobiography of uh, Ben Franklin. Uh, I forget who wrote it, but uh, a lot of this stuff is wonderful. TJ, I tend to subscribe to his philosophies more than uh, more than Sam Adams. TJ was uh, if he was around today, he'd be. Uh, what is it? Libertarian, uh, without a doubt. Bacon air freshener. Oh, my truck is calling you. Sizzling bacon aroma. Where do they get this stuff? Look, you get, you get the diagram. You remember the one they got the diagram of the what Wiley Coyote's got of the of the, the speedy bird thing. You know, smoked, <laughs> peppered, <laughs> hickory, <laughs> maple, <laughs> hogshead. <laughs> Wings? Why is there wings on a pig? It's the flying pig. Does he call you KP? He would. He say, "Yo, KP." I say, "Hey, TJ. What's up, my man?" There you go. Bacon air freshener. I can't get this around here, right? We got a little town. There's 800 people. We got a dollar store, and that is the cultural hub of this little town. Seriously, the dollar store. You can get stuff. I got some. I got some coffee there. I got some. Uh, I got some tape. All right? Where's my tape? It's around here. There you go. I get tape. Not the holder. I had to go to the big town for that. But I get you know the tape. It's like you know two for a dollar. Now we got. You know how people be sending in their clothes? I got. I got Young Mugs coffee roasters. I got a. Got a coin op shirt. I got. I got a CFA shirt. I got. Looksy, I got a Looksy shirt. I got some socks. In bacon we trust. I B W T. That's right. Socks. I probably won't wear these. I'm just saying. And what's on the bottom? If you can read this, that's all it says. I have to look inside now. Oh, there's. There's another message on the other foot. Bring me some bacon. There you go. You put those up and you put your feet up. You know, you got one right here. You got one right there. You got my head in the middle. That's how you, that's the proper way to watch Ken on YouTube. That's how we, we stared at uh, Johnny Carson that way for years. If, you know, if you don't see Johnny Carson without a foot on either side of his head, you don't recognize him. True story. There we go. Let's set that over here with the uh, with the bacon bomb. And the bacon. Where'd it go? Where'd my bacon air freshener go? Oh, good. I thought I'd lost it. There we go. I enjoy bacon. This needs a home. There, bacon and coins. 
Check this out. You can wear them in Maine. Now, I don't go to Maine in any season where it's so cold you got to wear shoes. Forget that. I don't. I have no shoes now. This is me. This is normal. Um, I'm working on the floor thing. I need a housekeeper. There we go. I like that. That's a slick. This is going to hang around for a couple of weeks. But if you uh, if you collect coins and you like to get these sort of things, you can win this. You don't have to pay. All you got to do is get lucky. And uh, well, it's a lot of fun. Hello, Night Owl. Laura Day, somebody's looking for you. I don't know if you found them. Let me try to think. Who's looking for Laura Day? Uh, somebody. Go check every channel you frequent. And they said, if you find Laura Day, try Victor Cruz. Try uh, Flea Market Coin Hunters. Try Clash. Clash is looking for you. You you won something, and if you don't get it, he's going to give it to somebody else. you got, like, tomorrow before, to claim that prize. <coughs> Clash. That's it. It was one of those channels I was watching. Okay. Uh, we'll go from there. Hmm. Josh, look at all the good stuff. We got stuff for the dance go. We got stuff for the big show. We got more stuff for the big show. We got props. Huh? Huh? We got lip balm. Man, everything tastes like bacon. That's how coffee should taste right there. Get up in the morning, you make your bacon, you make your coffee. Use the same pan. It's all good. There you go. We got some goods over here. Look at these. Hong Kong nickels, nice and shiny. Yeah, I'll give those away. First thing. Pesos. What was that one? That was... Somehow we missed this one. Five shillings. Is that Hong Kong? Republic Sturridge. Republic Sturridge. Where's this from? I don't have any idea. Sturridge. Sturridge. It's a stretch mark. Can't say that on TV. It's a shilling. 1960. Republic Ostrich. Ah, oh, it's Austria. That's what it is. You know, Vienna, Mozart, all that stuff. Flowers. Five shillings. Ein. Ein. One shilling. Where did I get the five from? Oh, the five cents of the Hong Kong nickel. That's what I'm thinking. Well, no matter. There it is. This message is held for review. That'll teach you. Don't be swearing on my channel. That's my place to swear on the channel. Oh, and congratulations, by the way, Laura Day. I just had a bacon burger. Really, do you need hamburger? Just give me some, yeah, a bun, you know, a pound of mayonnaise, uh, some bacon, some cheese. Mmm. Mmm. Jeez, I think I might have to go and cook some dinner. To get a box of pennies, and they gave me another uncirculated box of 2018 Lincoln cents, no P. Well, there should be no P. P was only used on 2017 because it was the anniversary of the... Uh, uh, the Philadelphia Mint. Yeah, 225th year or something like that. Black Steel. People get those boxes of brand new pennies and uh, they say, oh man, I've been skunked. Well, first off, it's still early in the year, so it may be that there are uh, dye varieties to be found in there. Stay right here. All right. Okay, here we go. Do we get skunked on these? That's a box of 2016s uh, that I've had for a couple of years now. There you go, 2016. And I've gone through enough of these to know that there are some there are some minor dye classes in these. But, uh, you know, you take that box, and at this time of the year, you can get a dollar per roll for those. Right? Plenty of people on the West Coast can't get those peas, and they love to have a roll or two. And a buck a roll? They'd be all over it. Uh, different ways to market it. You can sell them, you know, a single roll at a time. These are all 2016. We, we can't see a focus on that. I'll put it over here. 
you know, plus shipping. And they'll gladly pay the shipping. But did you just did you did you get skunked? Because it sounds to me like you just made twenty five bucks. Is there anything being found in the two thousand eighteens yet? Uh, die clashes, and much like the old ones that you've seen before. But check all your usual suspects. Excuse me. Look for doubling in the date. Look for doubling in RT and Y. You know, look for uh, the initials to be uh, doubled. Where's this? You know, look for the designer's initials to be doubled down here. Look for the usual suspects. That one doesn't have a designer's initials. Hmm. There they are. They're in there. Just you get that thick paper. Okay, but keep an eye out. Now, if you keep them for longer than a year or two, you can get a, you know, two bucks a roll. That's the way it works. But you got to store them well. These I had over here by the window open. Uh, and some of the enders, what the hell's going on here? Dude, well, these are junk. I'll just take these back to the bank. But I got another box that's in the, uh, it's in the case over here. And it's holding up just fine. But these here were loose. I had taken some out to look at them. And I'm getting this star tool. I haven't looked inside the rolls. But uh, if you're going to store them, you want to store them well. Keep them away from humidity. Right? Uh, being by the window, I suspect I had more humidity because it will attract the, the moisture. I could actually open these. And I bet you just the enders are screwed up. Let's see. There's home. If I take this, look at all this stuff. Paul is a madman with this. Okay, we'll sit down on the board here. New card. You can open these. Now I use a toothpick. All right, you can put a toothpick in, just peel the edges, you know, until you're exposed. Because uh, I don't have the dexterity anymore to open these things up with my bare hands. You know. A lot of times you lose the end. A lot of times you lose that ender. You get some splotch or some growth or, you know, a bug or something. I got I got a box over here of tubes, and they're half full, but I had all the lids, lids off because I was sorting stuff out. Uh, there's like spiders in half those things. So that's been sitting there for a couple of years. Yeah, these are looking pretty good. We lost the ender. Yeah. The rest of them look just fine. And people will pay a couple of bucks for a roll of 2016 brand new because they didn't, oh geez, I didn't hold some back for myself, you know, two years ago. Now they'll pay top dollar for the form again. And they look fine. Let me put one under the scope here. Let me put a fingerprint on it first. There you go, 2016. Oh, a little splotchy. We'll just spots from the rinse. And I bet you we can find one of these, uh, one of these, uh, there it is, right there, a little clash mark. Uh, all these rolls, you get about uh, anywhere from five to ten, and get this little clash mark right here behind the neck. That's it. That's the whole thing. That's how exciting it is. Yeah. Well, what the heck. I get a bunch of them. Yeah, but these shields, they just don't last. There's nothing wrong with the storage uh, as far as, you know, there's babies crawling on the, on the thing. No, well, okay, we did have a cat around. So maybe that would help. But uh, I've got a bunch of these rolls on their own with no prompting. Right, they're just going to hell. They're doing this. That's just awful. And we just opened one. So the enders are taking a pounding. Whatever's flowing through the air here. I'm breathing this crap. Is that a frog? All right. That broke off, whatever it was. But the zinks can do this. Older ones are fun. If you get a brand new box of rolls, you can market them right now for a buck a piece. Take away your costs. You're going to be left, you know, you're up... 30 cents to, you know, 80 cents. How much are those lathe line coins you mentioned in your blog usually worth? 
No idea. They don't trade enough to to establish a, a regular market price. Um, you see them show up in the uh, in the coin op group, for example, on Facebook, two times a year, maybe three. Uh, that'd be a lot. They just there aren't that many of them. People find them, maybe they don't recognize it, uh, and they pass over it. It looks like fingerprints, for example. I got a couple back here behind me. Uh, my best numbers say between 20 and 50. Uh, should be what a lathe line would go for. You know, for higher grade, higher value. Uh, but I can't nail it down. It's impossible to nail it down. There just aren't enough being traded. Where are they? Well, we make people more aware of it and uh, increase the demand. And those prices you'll see will climb, I'm sure. Uh, what are we, 1996 is the most common year for them. So we're 20 years after the fact. And you still have, uh, what, seven certified examples? Between 20 to 50 is pretty good money. I'd say it's pretty conservative of our investment as well. It can easily go... You know, far above that. Uh, that's the stuff you can look for out there. People don't know about it. They're not going to find it. 1996 was a good year. I'd love to get a whole BU roll of 1996. You know, pick them up for two to three bucks for the whole roll. And if you got 50 in there, you know, you just you just got a down payment or something. I'll trade you some 18 Ds for some Ps. I, I don't need 18 Ds. But somebody will. Somebody needs them. Ooh, that other guy. That other guy who's got the peas. Yeah, get yourself a trade going. Um, for shipping, right? Let me pull this up. Paula had put all of her bacon goods in a uh, priority mail small box. Now, that ships for seven fifty or so. And you can fit a lot of rolls in that. Um, one roll, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost you 3 bucks. Two rolls, it's going to cost you 4 and a half bucks three rolls and it goes over the weight limit on the first class package and you got to use this anyway so if you're going to do it go big and you know do 10 rolls for example for 10 rolls 10 bucks and 750 shipping and you you pay, you, you put a five dollar bill in your pocket you do that five times for the whole box not too bad i don't believe in unsearched rolls they're out there this is unsearched this roll has never been searched by man but I've searched, you know, 50 rolls that came right with it, right off the truck. And I can tell you what's in there because I've got, you know, a statistical, a st a statistical sampling of all the coins that come with it. Because what's in that roll is the same as what's in this roll. And the same as what's in that roll. And these are clash dies in these. Pretty minor. I, had a, I got a couple of rolls already picked out, you know, just the clash dies. But, uh, geez, you got a, you got a whole box of BU. Not, you're not being scout. Hey, man, can I get another box? Because you can sell those off and we'll pick up a few bucks. It's been, is it worth your time? Uh, can you save them for a couple of years? Because you'll get far more. You know, instead of making 50 cents on a roll, you make about $1.50 on a roll. Uh, is it worth holding on to for two, three, four, five years? Are they going to get uh, screwed up? Right? Are you sorting them properly? Really, this should be uh, uh, stick it in a Ziploc bag and put uh, some desiccant in there. You know, this is these are no good. So I'll get rid of these. Uh, what do I got here? This this is probably twelve bucks. Oh good, I can get some more. I get some more rolls. Shelly says I just got home. I have a mom and pop store that sells uncirculated 65 to 2,000 rolls, all unsearched. They sell for three bucks a roll. Been having a field day. That's not a bad price. I get them for, you know, a buck and a half, two bucks uh, from memorials. Your estimates will probably run you a little more. Uh, five, six, ten, uh, upwards, you know, sometimes. 69S kind of gets a little more. Uh, but you got to check them, you know. Is, is that properly crimped? Right, because if that looks like it's flayed in any way, if you get this sort of thing going on, yeah, they've been through it. All right now, they're trying to recover their money. Cost you two bucks a search a roll, but they got a device out there. You can put it on the end and just twist it, and it puts these back up. But if you see them, they're kind of flayed out and splayed. 
somebody has been through that role already. And the whole reason that they would be going through that role is, is to do exactly what you're doing, checking for dive varieties. And then they close it back up. And if you see this, skip it. Been there. There's not, you will find nothing in that role. Okay? you got to be tight. It's going to be machine crimped. And that's going to be tight as hell. Okay, maybe not perfect. But watch out for, you know, watch out for rewraps. They take them apart. They look. They do their thing. They, you know, they find some value. They reload it with whatever. There you go. Watch yourself out there. There are people who are eager to, you know, screw somebody out of a dollar. No problem. Not. It's worth a dollar to them. They're going to screw you out of it. They'll bust your windshield in for the two dollars sitting on your seat in your car. Don't cost them nothing. They got two dollars out of it. Better off going to the bank, you Delph. You Delph. I don't know what that means. Okay, well, I had to get on and show you the stuff Paula sent. And this was quite a surprise. That's a magnificent creature right there. What do you like better, the queen or the spider? Queen? Spider. The monarch? Or the king of the wilderness? Huh. That's slick as hell. I'm sorry, girl. You lose. Is that a boy or girl spider? Barking? Do they bark? They got barking spiders out there? Oh, Jesus. Where's my shotgun shells? I'm ready. I'm good. They're safe. They're, they're within reach. My bank said they can't even order half dollars. Time to get a new bank. That one that says they can't order half dollars? Now is your drop-off bank. You get two banks. One way you pick them up. The other way you drop them off. Because you don't want to drop them off and say, Oh, can now can I get, you know, two more boxes of pennies? Because they will throw, they're going to throw rocks at you. You pick them up at one bank, drop them on off at another. And if you got one that's not offering you service, because what? They're not in business of customer service? That must be it. Then that's where you dump your rolls. Here you go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a deposit. Uh, I wrote an article. It's good. You got one account for all your, you know, personal stuff. Your, you pay your credit card bills, your truck payment, your light bill. You know, you buy your groceries. That's where your debit card is. So you can go to the store and, and buy stuff like, you know, you buy lip balm. Right. You pay for that with your debit card. Uh, the other account in a different bank is where you handle all your coin stuff. You ha you link that to uh, to your PayPal account where you buy and sell coins, right? If you're going to sell these rolls and make a dollar, it goes into that account, right? You're going to pay for shipping out of that account. You know, it's for coins. You get everything in one spot. Uh, when it comes time to do your taxes and figure out how much you made so you can give half of it to the government for all the work that they put in, uh, it's all in one place. It's handy. It's convenient. The funnel web with one fang is a male. Are those fangs or mandibles? I don't know. But she got that venom thing coming out of her butt. And I understand this is only like a one-tenth scale model. A real one would cover like half the desk. And... I'd go through a whole box of shells trying to blast them. That's a big, ugly spider right there. You crop dusted? Oh, let me set these down. There. Ken Peaver, what work does our government do again? Please remind me. Um, that's where they they defend your liberties and uh, look out for, you know, everyone. Yeah, and they build roads. They get that uh, Eisenhower superhighway system. So they take half your money to, you know, fill potholes. that last about three months. Usually the bigger spiders are female. You're right. And they eat their, their, they eat their mates during copulation. It's like, dude, dude, it ain't worth it. Run, just stay away from that. They spend, all, they, they spend all they can tax and all they can borrow. And they spend it all on a program to tell you what a great job the government is doing for you. We're from the government, and we're here to help. Yeah. Look at the crumbs everywhere. Look at the cookies. Okay, this is what we got from Paula. 
that's a magnificent batch if you'd like to uh, outdo Paula uh, on the big show you can get a hold of me at this address because we can put together a heck of a nice package and it all goes out to somebody who collects coins and is going to hold on to these for a long long time that's a myth about black widows it's a praying mantis that uh, that eats their their eats their spouse if you call it it's just a meal <laughs> not really a spouse he showed up i ate him yep just gnawing their heads off the guys out there getting his groove on okay yeah we got some good stuff now i'm gonna get to work uh i got some stuff i'm trying to do in this table behind me because it's clear and stuff can you see this look how clean this is of course i've got a half cover with more stuff I gotta get some stuff ready for sale. Oh, oh, there's the cookies. Uh, I'll probably have a sale on Friday because this stuff is building up and it needs to find a home. What is that, lint? There we go. So we'll find a uh, we'll find a home for a lot of this stuff. Yep. And I'll sell stuff and I'll take the money and buy more coins because I'm sick with this. Maybe the mail doesn't do it right. So, I would love that 31 ass. There you go. Be here Friday. We'll uh, we'll figure it out. I don't even know what the heck to charge for it. We'll figure something out. Do we do an auction? Do we do a flat rate bin? Plan on it Friday. What day is this now? I think it's a bug that was in that box. God, don't send anything else. There's bugs in your in the mail. Be there or be square. Yeah, Friday Night Madness. We usually have it at 9.30. Uh, took a couple of weeks off just so I could catch up on things around here. Get some sleep. Search and watch a vid on YouTube. Breaking Barrier. Hmm. You'll die laughing. It's hump day. Is it hump day? What is this? It's freaking Wednesday. I had, to, I had something I had to do today. Oh, yeah. Take a nap. Got that done. I can cross that off my list right now. What's next on my list? Take another nap. Okay. I got to get to work, guys. There's, there's naps to be had. Uh, there's a beer in the fridge. I'm swamped, really. Gosh, you guys stay groovy. We'll be back probably Friday and Sunday. No, Saturday is coin class. You want to be here for that. Sunday evening, 930. That's when we have the big giveaway and we'll probably include something from here. I'm going to keep that and show it off for a couple of weeks and build some like, suspense and excitement and get people anxious. They'll be Jones. And, When's he going to give it away? No! Put in the spider! Friday at what? 3 in the morning? Usually 9.30 at night. Eastern time. So it'd be like, you know, ju you just get out of, you got to race home from work on the West Coast. But there's more people on the East Coast, so that's a good time for it. He caters to the international crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my sleep cycle's messed up. I'm up all night. I sleep during the day. It's actually kind of nice. It keeps the AC bill down. Yep. All right. I'm going to take off, folks. You all stay groovy.